Well, tonight on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are very offended right now with president Joe Biden. They're offended with him, not because of normal things that we were talking about because of what he decided to do as of recent, when it comes to our young brother who died in a horrible way, Emmett Till. Now, before I get into what Biden decided to do and what Biden did not do, which he could have done and gave this young man some sort of justice. Let's talk about the Emmett Till story because see, there's a lot of people in this country. You know, a lot of people talking about Florida and Florida is a testing ground to see if they can erase American history because our history is American history. I know we say black history month and all of that, but no, it is the history of America and the history of America that the white supremacists want to erase or try to get rid of it or minimize it. Now, the reason why we have to always talk about our history, because as they would say, if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat that same history. So the white supremacist, what he has attempting to do is try to erase history, whitewash history, bring black people in here from different countries to be on a uh, task force to try to side with them and use other black people. You know, the, the Edward Bloom strategy, you know, use immigrants to do your dirty work. So this is what they're trying to do here in Florida. And when you see one state doing that, then you need to go on the offensive, the attack. And one thing we could tell the white supremacist is this, you don't have the keys of information no more. Sure. In your public schools that you control, you could not try to teach black history, but history is out there because history is going to be talked about all the time. And that's why I tell people, this is on lane for us to talk about our history. Those of us who have a microphone or some of you who don't have a microphone, but you want to talk about our history in a real way. So Emmett Till, he grew up in a working class neighborhood on the South side of Chicago. And though he attended a segregated elementary school and say he was not prepared for the level of segregation he encountered in Mississippi. Now his mother warned him to take care because of his race, but Emmett enjoyed pulling pranks. Now on August 24th, they say while standing with his cousins and some friends outside a country store in money, Mississippi, they say Emmett bragged that his girlfriend back home was white. Now, in that time period, that would have been extremely dangerous even to even say something like that. Of course, he was a kid. He, he obviously, you know, he was, he was a young boy. Okay. This is why we have to educate our children, even though they're young about racism, white supremacy. The reason why we have to educate our children is because it is a life or death thing for them. And much as we want to keep our kids innocent, trust me, I feel the same way, but do you want to keep them alive? So one thing that we can learn from this historical story is that we need to always educate our kids about racism and white supremacy at all times. So Emmett, you know, in his family and, and other people he was talking to it, the companions at the time did not believe him and dared Emmett to go ask the white woman, which was Carolyn Bryant sitting behind the store counter for a date. So he said he went in, he bought some candy on the way out. He was heard saying, bye baby to the woman. And I said, there was no witnesses in the store. I said, but Carolyn Bryant, it said the woman behind the counter, the demon herself later claimed that he grabbed her, made lewd advances and wolf whistled at her as he sauntered out. Now, Roy Bryant, the white supremacist devil terrorist, and the woman's husband returned from a business trip a few days later and heard how Emmett had allegedly spoken to his wife. Enraged, he went to the home of Till's great uncle, Mose Wright, and say with his half brother J. W. Millam, and say in the early morning hours of August 28th, they say the pair demanded to see the boy. Despite pleas from Wright, they forced Emmett into their car after driving around in the night and beating Emmett Till in a two house behind Millam's residence 
and they drove him down to the Tallahatchie river. But let me say something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a, I gotta say this cause it's just me and how I feel. It ain't no way. No white supremacist is going to show up to my house and tell me I need to see your boy. I'm like, look, you better get on. I don't know what you're doing over here, but you don't get up off my, on my property in about a good five seconds. I got something for you. And I, if it was 1955, whatever I say, if I'm going to go, y'all going, I'm going to take y'all. I'm going to take y'all and defend myself. And I gladly uh, uh, get the rope. I say, because I couldn't sit there as a man and you taking my family member like that. And I just sit up there and just kind of plead and beg. Man, forget the pleading and begging. And not every brother was on that. Now, this is what I would say. Just, just, just keeping it real. That great uncle could have saved that boy's life to a point. He could say, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice my life and I'm going to deal with them too. I'm going to take them out. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go somewhere else. Go. And of course, we have many stories of that happening. Of course. But I'm just saying, just reading this, just we talk about history, it just kind of enraged me because, you know, just like you got people today who won't stand up and kind of cower down, he was, should have protected Emmett at that time. So they took Emmett Till away and they made Emmett carry a 75 pound cotton gin fan to the bank of the Tallahatchie River and ordered him to take off his clothes. And the two grown men, then beat him nearly to death, gouged out his eye, shot him in the head and threw the body tied to the cotton gin fan with barbed wire into the river. See, this is what Ron DeSantis and the white supremacists want to hide people throughout the world. This is American history. This isn't some movie. I wish it was a movie we were describing, but it's not. This is American history. This really happened to a child for telling a white woman by baby. This woman lied all this stuff that happened. And she was allowed to roam around all these years. Okay. Nothing happened to her for lying, but let's continue. And say three days later, Emmett Till's corpse was discovered. It's able to so disfigured that most say right could only identify it by the initial ring. Authorities wanted to bury the body quickly, but Emmett Till's mother, Mammy Bradley requested it be sent back to Chicago. So after seeing the mutilated remains, she decided to have an open casket funeral so that all the world could see what the white supremacist devil terrorists had done to her only son. Now jet jet magazine, if those of you, at least in my age range, you know about the jet magazine, they published a photo of Emmett's corpse and soon the mainstream media picked up on the story. That's why black media is important because if it wasn't been for black media, then none of us would be talking about this as it less than two weeks after Emmett's body was buried. Miller and Bryant went on trial in the segregated courthouse in Sumner, Mississippi, Mississippi has always been a breeding ground for the most evil white supremacists that ever walked the face of America, Mississippi. And it still is to this day. Listen to all the stories that still come out of Mississippi of, of brothers getting a rope brothers being, uh, uh, tortured and all the other things that's happening to brothers and sisters in that state. They say continuing. There were a few witnesses besides, uh, mostly right who positively identified the defendants as Emmett's killers. It's on September 23rd, the all white jury deliberated for less than an hour before issuing a verdict of not guilty, explaining that they believe the state had failed to prove the identity of the body. Many people around the country were outraged by the decision and also by the state's decision to not indict Millam and Bryant on the separate charge of kidnapping. And say the Emmett Till murder trial brought to light the brutality of the Jim Crow uh, segregation in the South. It was an early epitome of the civil rights movement. Now in 2017, Tim Tyson, author of the book, the blood of Emmett Till revealed that Carolyn Bryant later known as Carolyn Bryant Dunham recanted her testimony, admitted that Till had never, never, never touched 
threatened or harassed her. She says, and I quote, nothing that boy did could ever justify what happened to him. In 2022, a grand jury in Mississippi declined to indict Bryant for her role in the crime nearly 70 years earlier. Of course, she um, went to hell with Satan in 2023. So this is the story of, of Emmett Till. In this, so now let's get to President Joe Biden. President Joe Biden was, was in office when this woman was alive. Many people asked him, Hey, president Biden, the DOJ need to prosecute this woman. She admitted that she lied about everything. So she's an accomplice to what happened to that young man. So she should go to jail, do something about it. Biden, what ended up happening? Biden shuffled his feet. Biden's DOJ did nothing, nothing at all. So, now, after you know the story of Emmett Till, now you know Biden didn't do anything about it, even when he was asked by his DOJ, to, you know what I'm saying? Now this is what Biden going to do, which is a big slap in the face and should be so offensive to all black Americans, especially the senators of slaves and the freedmen. Biden is a will reportedly sign a proclamation on Tuesday to establish a national monument honoring Emmett Till. He's going to give Emmett Till a national monument. Didn't give the young man justice and he could have. See, maintaining white supremacy is very important. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat. It doesn't matter if they're Republican. Maintaining white supremacy is the way things have to be for them. They'll play a game. And I told you the Democrats act like they are our friends. This, this was a Democrat in office, not a Republican. And yet he didn't do anything about it. You think he didn't know about this? He knew. He, let me tell you something. Black folks get indicted for a bunch of nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying now this woman lied and caused this child to lose his life. Black folks have done just been in a room with certain people and went to jail on conspiracy Rico and everything else. But, but in this country, we don't have an equal system of justice. We have a system for, for, for them folks and a system for black folk. The system for black folk is wicked. It's unfair. It's unjust. And it's not a democracy. It is a authoritarian regime is what black people live under. The folks, they live under a, I'm going to say quote unquote democracy because they really don't live under democracy either. But in this system, because they have a racial caste system, at least it, India admits they have a caste system. But in this country, we have a racial caste system. Of course, the, the folks is at the top. So the folks are, you know, given the benefit of the doubt. They're given second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances. A mediocre uh, person in their community can do great things. I just saw something and, I, and it just dawned on me because how many times have you seen this? You have this mediocre, uh, uh, female in their community interviewing all these rappers interviewing these high dollar rappers. And I say a mediocre female in their community can get access to, to men who make millions of dollars, but a mediocre black girl couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, and that should be offensive. And I wouldn't even participate in something like this. I always tell people I, I look at ca my character and it, it means more to me. My dignity means more to me than money or whatever. Right. I, I, I'm just saying, and I, I just, I'm like, look, you couldn't send the best of the best that you got to interview. You going to send some mediocre girl that just got started, please. Anyway. So in this system, they get everything handed to them, literally. Now they'll tell you, hey, well, I'm not rich. Hey, I, I struggled. I, I grew up in the trailer park. Hey, I grew up in West Virginia. I didn't have much of nothing. I'm not saying you did. But one thing you do have, you have the currency of whiteness. And that is a currency in itself. See, when, when the police get behind you, you don't have to worry about getting, getting your, your, your head blown off. It takes a lot for them to do that to you. You literally have to be fighting them. 
There's been, and y'all seen the videos. They had knives, they had guns, they have, they have literally attacked cops, attacked them. And they will not even do much or nothing to them. A black person have a cell phone in their hand. There's a video that just came out of a black man surrendering to the police, got his hands up, backing up to the cops. And, and, and one police from a city jurisdiction, not the state troopers that was telling them, you know, to, to come back to them. He let lo- loose the dog on him while he was surrendering. While he was surrendering with his hands up and the state trooper said, don't, don't uh, release no dog on him. He, he said, don't do that. He said, he got his hands up. He still did it anyway. They, how many, how many videos have you seen or even heard of stories like that happening to white people? See that that's what I'm talking about. White people don't live in authoritarian regime that we live in as black people. We're told we live in a democracy, but that's not the way we treat it. It's a different set of rules for us and a different set of rules for them. They can have a low credit score, get all this money thrown at them for a business. A black person could have an 800 credit score and still can't get one. They bad. They can have a low credit score, go get a home loan, right? One video I covered on the African diaspora, a man that used to work for the bank, white gentleman said that they were saying the bank, Oh, well he looked like he'd be good for it. But a black person, that got a high credit score and money. They don't get along. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, see that that, once you break down the reality of what we live in America is sometimes that's why I don't get involved in certain conversations because I see the reality uh, of the fact. So Biden decides to maintain white supremacy and not give justice to Emmett Till, but you're going to spend federal dollars on your, on the monument. Wouldn't it have been better to give justice to the family of Emmett Till than a monument? There's a lot, plenty of monuments to Emmett Till all over this country. And, and a lot of times when they have these monuments in Mississippi or whatever, it's defaced. They try to destroy it. They've done so many different things to placards and everything with Emmett Till's name on it. Even though that yet young brother had been gone since the, the, the fifties, they're still attacking this young brother's name. So, let, so let, let's continue. So they said the Emmett Till and Mammy Till Mobley national monument will span three sites in Illinois and Mississippi, remarking locations that are central to Till's story, according to uh, what was being reported. They said a new monument will protect places that tell the story of Emmett Till's too short life and racially motivated um, deletion. They said the unjust acquittal of, of his uh, devils, they say, and the activism of the mother. Uh, Mammy Tia Mobley, you say, who courageously brought the world's attention to the brutal injustices and saying racism of the time catalyzing the civil rights movement. They say a White House official has said it. They say it would include the Roberts Temple Church of God in Christ in Chicago, where Till's mother held an open casket funeral to display her son's brutalized body. They say grab all landing in Tallahatchie. They say County, Mississippi, where Till's body believes to have been pulled from the Tallahatchie River. And the Tallahatchie County Second District Courthouse in Sumner, Mississippi, where Till's uh, white supremacist terrorists were acquitted. They say we'll be part of the monument. It said Till was visiting. Of course, you know the story. And this is the thing here. <laughs> Biden, Biden, man, how much more do this man have to do to black people? This man, all you had to do, man, all you had to do was tell your Department of Justice, say, hey, that that woman did that is no statute of limitations on a uh, 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 killing folk. She needs to be prosecuted period. She needs to live her life in prison. Let's give that family some justice. Cause that's what she admitted happened. That that child didn't do anything wrong. You got to think about it. This man was responsible for the 1994 crime bill. He was responsible for that. This man caused a big issue in the, in our community around the time period. Now look at them today with all this meth and all the stuff that they own, right? Where's his crime bill for that? He got, you can go back and listen to what all the speeches he made about. He didn't want them around his family. He said, if they going to get treatment, they need to get it in jail. That's what Biden said. And this is what angers me about the black community even though he did all that, you still ran your behind out there and vote for him because you had to get Trump out. 
Trump didn't sign one crime bill to harm the black community, not one. But you are so stuck in your demonic deception for these wicked Democrats that you can't even see when they doing you wrong. You don't even have no principles. You say, look, I'm, even if you want to vote Democrat, I've told you that. Fine. You, you had 17 other Democrats you could have voted for. 17 others. And that's the one you chose. Out of all the people that they had, y'all could have chose. You could have chose somebody else. Someone else. But no, y'all, y'all don't have no respect for your black community or yourselves. And when you show people they can disrespect you, or you show somebody they can bully you, they're going to keep doing it. It's not like they're going to like, oh, okay, let me get away with it once. And I'm no, if you allow disrespect, they're going to keep disrespecting you. If you allow someone to slap you, they're going to keep slapping you. If you allow someone to punch you, they will keep punching you. If you allow someone to keep stealing from you, they're going to do it. Whatever you allow, they're going to keep doing it because they have no incentive to stop. So y'all have rewarded Biden you rewarded him with votes and everything. Even when that man's running, he disrespected y'all and said that you're not black if you don't vote for him. Like that's how disrespectful he, he is. And then he continuing to disrespect with this monument, man, when he had the opportunity to bring that woman to justice. And then you remember they talked about the all white jury that's still happening today. Notice they haven't talked about bring, making sure that juries look like the communities. Even if you all grew up, go in a black community, they still try to stack the juries with all white folk. They may have a black here, but you know, and, and I don't like to bring up the other groups like, like Asians and all that. Cause we already know what that situation is. We, it's, it's no reason you can go back into that. Right? So if you don't have, and then what kind of black person they may pick? Because nowadays we're dealing with issues where they handpicking even, even the black immigrants to cut that come in here they handpicking them and making sure they're not on our team. They, they don't want the riders from the Caribbean. They don't want the, 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 the riders coming from the African continent. And there's plenty of them. They don't want them to come over here. They thoroughly vet them. I'm telling you, I know this by traveling to the African continent and talking to the brothers and sisters over there. That's why you don't hear me going as hard sometime about black immigrants. Now when they acting a fool, yes, but I understand the, the reason they're here. A lot of them are here or how they came here is through the, through that embassy vetting the raccoon class from over there and not going, not getting the riders to come over. And you know, we could talk about that another time. So now what we have to contend with is, what kind of black person they put in there? Are they putting a descendants of slaves freedmen? Are they dealing with it? Are they putting an immigrant there? And if they putting a black immigrant there, what's their mindset? Are they just got here yesterday? Are they first generation, second generation? Cause all that do count that do count in a lot of ways in, in, in certain mindsets. How do they feel about black Americans? Because beyond with you lawyers these days go have to probably start asking Black people, when they see them on a jury, hey, where you from? Because you do have some people who come over here that have anti-black American descendant of slave sentiment. And that's a reality, unfortunately. It is a reality. Because, you know, white supremacy going to try to, you know, they they new way of, of attacking us is using our own, you know, cousins and using other quote-unquote people of color to do their dirty work like they use the Asians with the affirmative action deal. But black people, this is why I, I, I rail so much against the Democrats and Biden and things like that. Because when they have the opportunity to do what's right for black people, they refuse to. They make sure to work hard to do something for everybody else except the black man and woman in this country. They, you know what I'm saying? And that's what get on my last good nerves. This family deserve a true justice and they won't get it. But I will say this much the day and they see, they, they see their time is coming to an end. Trust me. They see it. They, they see the writings on the wall. They do not have the standing in the world 
that they had when I was a child. Trust me, they don't. People are not respecting them anymore. Other countries are forming alliances with each other and want to get rid of the American dollar. Everybody trying to, you know, just, they just getting sick and tired of them. At one point in time, if America says something, everybody listen. If America says something, everybody got in line all throughout the world. It's not like that anymore. They're being exposed every day. See, see, and this is, and, this, and, and like I said, what Biden has done, like I said, he just continuing the disrespect to, to our, to our young, to our ancestors and to, to our people. But Ron DeSantis and the rest of you, you know, we, we gonna definitely keep talking about this history because do you know, and maybe some of you know, unless some new people may not know, and people throughout the world could be watching, do you know they used to make leather goods out of black people's skin? Do you know that? Do you know they used to make uh, grease and everything for their uh, wheels and things like that out of black people's bodies? Did you know that? Oh, yeah. They used to, they used to like, look at, look at a leather coat you have, and they would take, they would take our lives and use our skin to make leather goods. These same people. The same people, Ron DeSantis and them trying to hide their history. See, they don't want you to know the horrors of slavery. They only want you to know the horrors of Jim Crow. They don't want you to know these horrors because when you learn the horrors, you're going to look at the, everybody gonna look at them like what in the hell, who are y'all people? And why are you going to my country and telling me anything? You are the biggest violator of human rights. Why are you telling me oh, anything? Cause they are like I told you black America is the Achilles heel of the white supremacist period. Nobody has our story in this country. Nobody people come over here and say, well, I was discriminated against. I'm not denying it, but nobody was making leather goods out of your skin, out of your, your ancestor skin in this country. Or were they? Nope. And if the discrimination or racism get too bad for you, a lot of you can go back to your homeland at any time if you chose to. A lot of you don't want to, but if it gets so bad, you have the option to leave. Black Americans don't have an option to leave unless they choose to go somewhere else. But like I say in the scriptures, God has told his people many times, go to a land. I will, I will show you this land will be flowing for you, milk and honey. So that's why I'm not holding to a place. Because if you sit up there and say, oh, this is my land and this is that, that, that. If I believe the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that means throughout the planet earth that they, they got land that he could, he could send me to whatever land he chooses to send me and I can have my milk and honey wherever he put me at. I am not held to a geographical location. I'm not held to a city. I'm not held to a state. I'm not hell there. Wherever God is going to send me, you have to be open for that because your blessings may be over there. Because even in the scriptures, they taught that Christ couldn't do nothing in his hometown. Sometimes you may not be doing a whole, can't do a whole lot in your home country. You may have to go elsewhere to do your, your mission. You just don't know. You, you don't know. But, these people don't want their true history told. They don't want people looking into Lake Lanier and why that lake is so cursed because it's cursed and why anybody should never try to go swim in Lake Lanier. Any black person to do that because you're not educated, but they, the white supremacists wiped out a whole black town and, ma and made and put a lake on top of it. And them ancestors and them, them, them angry spirits or anybody getting that lake, they be drowning. <laughs> I believe them ancestors be pulling you down there. That's what I believe is happening to you. And black folks, you better not go over there because you don't want the ancestors to get you for, for selling out. Just had a brother I heard the other day in Lake Lanier uh, drown out there. I'm like, oh, you shouldn't have been out there, but you're not educated. That's our problem. We, this is why the white, y'all, see, Y'all depend on the white supremacists to teach our history, to teach American history. That's your problem. If they're not going to treat you right, they're not going to teach you right. It, it's just that simple. But 
this is more and more for me proof why Biden don't deserve the black vote. He's the most disrespectful. I think president I've ever seen in modern times to black people because the things that he do like literally in black people's face, he know we need, we tell him what we need. He, he do the complete opposite. He give everybody something that didn't vote for him. He take care of everybody. Give foreigners like Ukraine billions of dollars when black folks talking about reparations. How much more disrespect can y'all take? Or, or in November, y'all going to show up and just like, oh, I got to go vote Biden because Boulay Martin said so. If you don't respect yourself, I, I don't know what else to tell you at this point. 